What a treat we have for you as this week's race of the week. This week is the turn of the BMW Nankang Tire Compact Cup. Part of the BRSCC meeting at Croft this weekend. An excellent race, so much so the commentator Andy McEwen had to catch his breath midway through. Enjoy. Red lights are on, and for the final time this weekend, they're out, and we're away in racing here at Croft. Who's going to get into Clairvaux Corner as the race leader? It is Mike Doble, I reckon, who's had the best of the start from the outside, and here comes the 146 of Alex Reed trying to find a gap on the inside. Couldn't quite get there, so Mike Doble will lead them then. Reed in second position around the outside goes uh, Peter Smith for third, and there's contact. Ross Stone and Richard Sutherland together, Sutherland back into the pack, and unfortunately, there's going to be a bit of carnage through Clairvaux. Richard Sutherland, I fear, was collected as he came back into the road, or maybe not. No, I think he's still going, would you believe? So, I uh, know there are cars picking their way out of the gravel further back, but they're all still going, and that is a minor miracle, really. Down the back straight we go, Gregor Pryor uh, was one, who ended up pointing the wrong way. Well, that could have been an awful lot worse. Mike Doble then leads the way. Here comes McMillan, look round the outside with Stephen Daly behind him. First time we've seen those two together on track, and that's going to confuse me because uh, Stephen is racing Gordon's spare car, so they're almost identical in livery. But uh, Stephen is ahead slightly at the moment. Side-by-side -side action there for fourth as they went through the Jim Clark S's, with the top three trying to get away. Mike Doble leading then, Reed in second position. Third, Peter Smith, Matt Flowers hanging on to fourth. On the outside line is right, on the inside of him, muscles Stephen Daly, as Richard Sutherland, I think, has taken the shortcut back to the pit lane, and with him goes uh, Gregor Pryor. Those two having both been involved in that tangle at the first corner, so was uh, Ross Stoner. He, I think, carried on. Ian Sutherland initially who tangled Matt Flowers with a lockup going into uh, the complex. We saw a lot of that in the race earlier on today, and that was Gareth Claydon in the background. Gareth Claydon uh, muscling somebody out of the way. I'm not sure who that was, but whoever they were, they ended up on the grass, and uh, Gareth Claydon very much involved in that. So Gareth Claydon then uh, tangling with somebody, and uh, he comes out of the hairpin with no one else around him. Try and figure that one out in a moment or two. But anyway, it is Mike Doble that leads. It's Alex Reed second. It's Peter Smith third. Flowers fourth. Daly fifth. Then Adam Wright, Gordon McMillan seventh. And Connor Grady eighth. So Grady hasn't had a great start, uh, having started. Started in eighth. Still eighth. But of course, um, he has stayed where he is, whereas Gordon McMillan has gained three places from where he started. And the back straight they go then. McMillan. Let's try and bank some more good points, especially with Gareth Claydon having a bad weekend. Important for McMillan to try and capitalise on that. Down towards Tower, Flowers with a big lock up on the bumps. He can't get the car stopped, surely. I think he might have done. Stephen Daly, meanwhile, backing up uh, right there, out of right, into uh, Gordon McMillan, who now goes around the outside of him and looks to the inside line for the Jim Clark S's. There go the top three. It's anyone's guess who's going to emerge in fourth place. Two by two through the Jim Clark S's. And I think Stephen Daly's gone through. Daly ahead of Flowers. Can McMillan, McMillan follow him? He's up the inside. He's up the curve. Uh, but Matt Flowers, standing his ground, tries to turn across in front of the number 20 car, which hits the kerb, gets a bit sideways. They're still sort of contesting the position as they go into Sunny out, where now McMillan on the inside line should come out on top. I think on the exit of the corner, Flowers is still alongside, though, and we're about to turn left into the complex. That should favour Matt, really, uh, in the number three. But McMillan, I think, will sweep round the outside and maybe brings with him Connor Grady, because Grady very much part of this battle now. Up the inside of Adam Wright, forces Adam over onto the curb and the grass, and uh, then gets across in front of him to defend the position into the hairpin. There is uh, Joe Doble now, getting up the inside of Noble. Gareth Claydon's on the grass in the background, muscled off by the uh, number 16 car of Mark Grady. I think that's one of Stephen Daly's old cars that Mark Grady's in. And Gareth Claydon, I think, is going to be quite happy to see the back of Croft. He's not had an enjoyable weekend in any way. And... Uh, Certainly the results on track, nothing to write home about. Yesterday, obviously had that clash with uh, Joe Doble whilst contending the lead, ended up finishing fourth, non-finished race two. And now finds himself really in the wars in uh, race number three and not yet inside the top ten. There's Corkwell with the recovering Ross Stone in the orange number 22 car getting up the inside of him. And ooh, Corkwell trying to get back in line. Uh, does get back in line, but uh, the expense of... Alistair Smith, I think that was. Out of tower, though, comes this battle for sixth position there. Matt Flowers at the head of it. Putting up a good defensive drive, in fairness, is Matt, but he's got uh, Conor Grady right behind him. He's the head for the right-hander at uh, Barcroft. 
Oh, and Adam Wright trying to join in the fun as well. Looks to the inside, but Conor Grady having none of it. And that covers off that inside move. Where did Claydon end up? He was 12th across the line. Can't yet see Gareth at the back of shot. There he comes, so he's got to try and find a way past Mark Grady, who, of course, he just tangled with at the hairpin. And then try to get on turns with the next group in front. Meanwhile, Joe Doble up the inside of Max Noble. But uh, the outside line, you carry more momentum via the outside line through that corner. And then as we turn into the hairpin, it is actually Adam Wright now on the move. He's had the better run off the corner. And looks to try and draw level maybe down the pit straight past the pits. There go Daly and McMillan then. They're running fourth and fifth respectively. McMillan with the fastest lap now, 41-4. Uh, Flowers, Grady, Wright, Noble and Doble. Still in the same positions as they were at the start of the lap. Gareth Clayton, by the way, did get past Mark Grady cleanly this time around. So Mark Grady um, down to 12th position. Clayton about three seconds nearly behind this group. Still with nine minutes to go, so he's got time to get there, hasn't he? And uh, perhaps gain a few more positions. But his chances of getting onto terms with Gordon McMillan now looking pretty slim. Grady looking to the outside of Flowers, and then Wright sees a chance to get his nose up the inside. Grady with a really good exit from Tower, though, and I think he's judged that well to get to the inside line into the Jim Clark S's. Can he make the move stick? He's on the outside for the right-hander, but I don't think it'll matter. I think he's done it. Uh, smoke down from Ross Stoner's car. And that looks more like engine smoke than tyre smoke. I know he had that contact at the first corner, but that looks like an engine that's going bang. And Ross Stoner might well be on his way to retirement. Meanwhile, for Matt Flowers, it's all unravelling. Wright has gone through. Noble's up the inside. Joe Doble will follow by as well. And Matt Flowers, I'm afraid, from pole position, is now dropping down towards the tail end of the top ten. Once Conor Grady opened that door and got him offline, it allowed the rest of them, really, to pounce and come through as well. Adam right there running quite wide through that uh, first part of the complex, but gets back in front of uh, no of uh, Doble. No, Noble, by the first time. <laughs> now, this looks interesting. That's the 41 car, which might have been the one that I saw tangling with Gareth Clayton on the first lap. Tim Seaford uh, on the inside there through the complex. And as Gordon McMillan sets another new fastest lap, another one minute 40.7, it's all kicking off further back, and there's contact, and around goes Seaford. And that was the number 42 of Rod Langham who got into him. And Rod waving his arms around, but, uh, <laughs> well, yes, I think maybe he will get limited sympathy from Tim Seaford. Ross Stoner through Clairvaux with that smoke still emanating from the back of the number 22 car, but he's not pulling in. Is there fluid coming out of it? I can't see anything being left on the track, and no one's uh, sort of sliding around behind him too much. Now, this is for the race lead, and that's been a change, hasn't it? Alex Reed has got past Mike Doble. Now, Doble was over a second ahead of Reed a couple of laps ago. At the line, it was down to a tenth, and Alex Reed has now gone through, so Mike Doble loses the lead then. Uh, that, meanwhile, is Rod Langham's car stationary at the side of the road at the hairpin, but quite a long way off the track, so hopefully they can leave it there, and we can let this race continue, because look what's happening. As these three battle, Stephen Daly and Gordon McMillan are getting closer and closer by the corner, so it's five cars for the lead now as we go through the entry to the complex we've still got nearly half the race to go so uh, Adam Reed I think sorry uh, yeah Alex Reed has uh, picked the right moment to hit the front hasn't he just before those two quick uh, grey and yellow cars get in the mix Peter Smith on the inside goes from third to first how did he do that Peter Smith he made a brilliant round the outside pass at Clairvaux in race one and he does it again on the inside of the hairpin to get the lead but for how much longer Stephen Daly is alongside him now as they come past the pits absolutely neck and neck the wing mirrors get folded in Daly on the outside line can he go round the outside of Peter Smith this is where Smith made his move in race two he's up the curb into the gravel goes Daly watch for Alex Reed to get back up the inside which he does and Alex Alex Reed tries now to get back into second position. Terrific racing. I said this would be worth the wait. The final race of the weekend. And it's the race of the weekend, I would say. Through goes Reed. And now Daly's on the grass. Stephen Daly bouncing down the grass. He's gone from fourth to first. And possibly now back to fifth again. Because through has gone Doble. And through has gone Gordon McMillan. Who suddenly sees a chance to get the hat-trick of victories. Can't quite get to the inside of uh, Mike Doble at Tower. But Gordon McMillan, a double winner so far this weekend. From
from 10th on the grid might not have felt that a win was on the cards and it might not be if he gets into a barging match with Mike Doble he's alongside him though round the outside into the Jim Clark S's and Gordon McMillan I think will get back into a podium spot that delays Mike Doble it brings Stephen Daly up the inside as well and as so often has been the case when I've been covering compact cup races down the years you've got to remember to breathe because this is truly breathless stuff 15 minutes and we cram a season's worth of entertainment usually into these races especially when you throw in the top 10 reversed grid so breathe peter smith leads the way alex reed second it is mcmillan now third daily with a lockup in fourth fifth position then for mike doble then a gap back to conor grady uh, in sixth position and uh, what's going on behind? Adam Wright, Max Noble, and Joe Doble, I think, is the order. Gareth Claydon, by the way, is still only in 11th position. So Gareth Claydon not making up as many positions as we might have expected. Out of the hairpin we go then. Can Conor Grady join in this battle, I wonder? Let's see how far back he is. He was five seconds behind them at the beginning of that sixth lap. At the end of it, he is only 2.6 back. He did a 42.3. Not a brilliant lap, but comfortably quicker than the group ahead of him. There goes Conor Grady. In the background, Gareth Clayton is back into the top ten now, ahead of the fading Matt Flowers. But uh, I don't think we're done with here yet, are we? Because Gordon McMillan and Stephen Daly still think that they've got a shot at a race victory. I'd love to know what happened to Mike Doble, though, because he was 1.2, 1.3 seconds up the road at one point, and suddenly that gap vanished. Alex Reed briefly led the race, and then Peter Smith, with the second unbelievable overtake that he's made today, Managed to go from third to first at the hairpin. The door just opened for him on the inside line and he went straight through it. Now McMillan trying to find a way past Alex Reed, who covers him off going into the Jim Clark S's. Right now, Reed is Peter Smith's best friend, isn't he, though? Because as he defends second place, Peter Smith uh, perhaps can start to build a bit of a margin out in front. It's not a big margin just yet. But uh, Alex Reed clearly is going to defend second place if he can. McMillan looking to the inside, though, into Sunny out. Has he got the overlap? I think he has. They're both going to be offline slightly. Can they make the corner? Well, not really. And McMillan shovels him off the road. And here comes Stephen Daly now. D Daly from fourth, at least into third. Can he go around the outside of McMillan for second? He's going to try. Snatches the break into the left-hander. But that's the inside for the right-hander. Not quite going to work. McMillan then will manage to go into second place. Brings with him Daly. And uh, also Mike Doble getting himself ahead of Alex Reed, who chinks to the inside of the hairpin and makes another brilliant lunge to go fourth. McMillan now a bit slow off the corner. It's all going on, isn't it? Conor Grady rubbing his hands with glee. He might just run out of time to really join in the battle, but less than three minutes to go, and Conor Grady's almost with them. There is a bit of a BMW Compact Cup car park forming in the pit lane. Mark Grady and Ross Stoner are in. Ross Stoner finally bringing that smoky number 22 car into the pits. But uh, what more drama do we have in store with probably a couple of laps still to go? Gordon McMillan into second position now. One more overtake required to get the hat-trick of victories uh, here from... Croft to really bounce back from the disappointing Alton Park season opener a couple of weeks ago. And it's Tower Corner. Mike Doble still hunting around behind Alex Reed as well. So that battle not done with yet, but they're just allowing now those top three to break away ever so slightly. So down towards the Jim Clark S's yet again. This, the eighth lap of the race. And can McMillan catch Peter Smith? He was one and a half seconds back. Well, I think the answer is yes, because from the little glimpse that I caught of them then through Parkroff, I think he's back with Peter. Oh, Reed is sideways. Alex Reed sideways. Did that open the door for Mike Doble? The answer appears to be no, but Doble definitely sensing blood in the water will be on the attack, as is Gordon McMillan, weaving to the inside, then to the outside. And can he find an overlap on Peter Smith, who we know is not afraid to make that the widest BMW Compact Cup car on the grid? He's uh, shown some good attacking driving today. Now needs to get his defending boots on. Pulls to the inside through the hairpin. But Millen will try and get the switch back and carry that run down the pit straight. Whilst Reed is sideways in front of Mike Doble. That really has brought Conor Grady into play now. Here we come then past the pits. And McMillan, I think, is on the inside line. But Peter Smith, we know, will commit to this outside line if he has to. What can he do? He keeps McMillan at bay. Can he make the corner? Yes, he can. Again, Peter Smith, the most confident man under braking, begins the final lap of the race still as the race leader with Gordon McMillan and Stephen Daly right in his wheel tracks through Hawthorne into the chicane. They fire themselves off onto the back straight where McMillan is less than a car's length behind. He will pull alongside, but will inevitably only be shown the outside line towards Tower. 
Peter Smith just needs to hook that inside line and then not run too wide on the exit. That was really clever positioning of the car there for Smith. He went slightly defensive, but only to the middle of the road so as not to compromise his exit speed completely. And actually it's McMillan whose exit is compromised. He makes the mistake, slides over the curb and the grass and opens the door for Stephen Daly. So Stephen Daly might now be about to move into second place and in doing so win Peter Smith the race. Through he goes, Daly into second, McMillan down to third and has that now let Peter Smith off the hook. I think it might have done. They're all sort of going to end up together again here, aren't they, at the end of the race? Because Reed, Doble, Grady and uh, Adam Wright are not that far behind. Down towards the complex, but Millen's on the grass. Can Stephen Daly get close enough to have a go into the hairpin? He's closed in pretty rapidly on Peter Smith here. Two more corners to go. Smith can't afford to make a mistake. How adventurous is Stephen Daly willing to be? Will he take a risk? Will he get to the inside of the hairpin? I don't really think he's close enough. He's more interested in defending second place, I think, from McMillan. And so Peter Smith, I reckon, will hang on. Accelerates off the final corner. Checkered flag awaits Peter Smith. And a huge round of applause from everyone on the pit wall after a sensational third Nankang Tires BMW Compact Cup race of the day. It is Smith, the winner, McMillan. Back ahead of Daly. Daly let McMillan go, I think, on the last corner. So Stephen Daly lets McMillan have second place. And McMillan second, Daly third, Alex Reed fourth, ahead of Mike Doble, Connor Grady, Adam Wright, Max Noble, Joe Doble, and Gareth Clayden to complete the top ten. Fantastic race, as you would expect from the Compact Cup.